If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Good afternoon, guys. Today is going to be a curious episode. Uh, I have never caught the species that we're going after for well over 10 years. I had to really go back into my archives on my hard drives to find pictures of fish that I've caught and when I caught them. And this one, again, has been just over 10 years when I caught it. We're going to go for the chain pickerel. It's not a fish we normally target, but today we're going to make that our effort today. I'm not the profound expert on chain pickerel, nor am I the profound expert on how to catch the chain pickerel. But I chose a couple things that might help us elicit the response that we're looking for for this particular species. I've got two styles of MEP style baits that we have right here. Uh, unfortunately, they aren't MEPs, which I was looking for, but still close enough. And as well, we got some minnows. Uh, we're going to throw some live bait out there. And I only know that pickerel in this pond right here that we're getting ready to fish in here is because there are two carcasses sitting down below on the ground when I came out here to fish the last time. So that would give me an idea that, yes, there may be pickle around here. And they were good size, guys, maybe two pounders. So I'm not going to talk anymore. Let's get these baits on there. Let's see which one gets a, a response, man. Is it going to be fake bait or is it going to be live bait? I don't know. So I'm watching over here as I'm getting ready to start this episode. I'm seeing a swell right here. I got a feeling it's a carp here because I'm seeing bubbles coming up from the bottom right there. But could be fish chasing bait. We never know. It's easy enough to throw live bait out there. You put the minnow on the hook and you hope for the best. The hardest part is trying to catch these fish on artificial baits. And uh, I did say on the onset that I didn't know whether I had a MEPS bait or not, but the one I pulled out is actually a MEPS bait. It's the MEPS Aglia. Nice and yellow and flashy. We're gonna use that one right there and then we're gonna use a nice homemade bait right here. It's got some beads, uh, silver and uh, the red beads on there to try to attract the fish and of course the silver blade. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and see if these will pick up any of these chain pickle that are out there. But I'm curious to see how this episode is gonna turn out, man. Uh, I'm kind of excited for this, man, if we do get these particular species on there. But again, the bonus is if we catch a big old bass, boom, I'm all happy for that too as well. I'm going to try not to jinx myself here, but uh, the reason I chose this side of the pond right here is I'm sure you can see the ripples from the wind blowing over here. However, when you look right here, you don't see it as pronounced on this side. So that's the reason why I picked it. And again, like I said, I saw the uh, carcasses on this side. But that's not to say they're on the other side, but it's quite deeper on the other side. And I want to work the shallow areas where I think these fish are you know, chasing, you know, being predatory. All right, we got our first victim on. <laughs> I'm going to try to cast as far as I can, as close to those pads as I can. Let's see if we can get the, something to come out of those pads. I don't have a lot of line. I should have re <laughs> re-spooled here, but uh, what we got right here is good enough. Nice slow retrieves, guys. Nothing super fast. And minnows are moving. He's bouncing that bobber. <laughs> Look at these swirls over there, guys. See them? All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower that bobber just a little bit. I keep seeing swirls right over here. What do we got going on here, guys? I think we might have a bite on here. Let's see what we got going on. It's underneath the water here, guys. I don't know what's pulling it underneath the water, but something is. Could be a turtle because it was pull pulled down and just sitting down there. It wasn't like moving. But it wasn't doing the normal bobbing up and down like a, the minnow moving around would do to that uh, bobber. See how it stays under? <laughs> and that minnow ain't that big, guys. Come on. If you're going to eat it, eat it. There it is, guys. There it is. See it? <laughs> yeah, we got snagged. You saw, <laughs> you saw that bobber go underneath. So something is nibbling on the end of that uh, minnow right there. I don't know what it is, but I, I got a feeling it might be a turtle. Guys, I, I cannot tell you how much I like Smith's Bait Shop, man. I mean, look at, the, look at the size of this minnow. For five bucks, you get a pint of these minnows, and they're absolute monsters. 
just about that much right there. I know it's gonna be shallow and everything else, but uh, the minnow can still swim around there. Right there is right where I was seeing those swirls and everything. So let's see what happens over there. Rod that I'm using right now, guys, is an old, ugly stick that I've had for quite some time. It's a four foot eight ultralight. I think the pound line is four pounds. Uh, it's Berkeley XL Smooth. We love using that brand right there. And of course, we got the ugly that's on the end. But let's get that out there. It'd be pretty fun if we can catch that chain pickle we're looking for. Tell you one thing, this MEPS lure does cast a distance even on his micro uh, ultralight rod. We got a fish on, guys. Fish on right here. What is it? Oh, we got a bass, guys. <laughs> All right, we're starting off with a bass. Oh, quick release. <laughs> All right, I thought I was stuck on the bottom, man, but he was just fighting like he was a eight pound lunker. Even though you're fishing with live bait, that does not 100% guarantee that you're gonna catch fish. Again, you got a lot of variables that are going on, mainly, uh, you know, the pressure, which is down a little bit because of, again, that storm, or not storm, but the small event that's coming through, which is that drizzling that's coming on. And we do have some thunderstorms that are gonna come later on in the afternoon. We're gonna fish as long as we can, and looks like we might have a fish on, guys. Maybe, we'll see. The bobber went down and under, but not for a sustained amount of period of time. There we go, big swirl guys, big swirl. That was a huge swirl right there, right off of that uh, bait. Look, 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 see, something's chasing the bait around. Come on, come on. <laughs> I mean, that thing had a huge swirl right in front of the bobber and then you see all those bait fish just jump around like crazy. There you go, fish, fish on guys, fish on. There it is, fish on, fish on. All right, what do we got? It's a bass. It's a leaper. It's a leaper. All right. Nice about two pounder, guys. <laughs> Great hook set right on the side of the mouth. <laughs> Look at how dark this bass is, man. What a pretty bass. All right. We're going to have to get the pliers on this guy. Got him there pretty good. But that was clearly insane seeing that blow up a bait over there. And this is the guy that got him. <laughs> All right, there we go. She's gone. Where did that go, guys? Oh. We have to cut this, guys. We got caught up in the electrical line right above me here. And rather than yank on it, I don't want to get electrocuted. <laughs> we'll leave it up there. <laughs> But uh, on to the homemade bait. I've never done that in my whole life, guys. Get a uh, bait caught up on the electrical lines, the power lines right above me. And I uh, wasn't about to get my ass uh, shocked here. I'm sure it would add some entertainment value for some people, but. <laughs> here come the noceums. Gotta love those. This one's a little bit heavier than the Aglia which is kind of good, but again, it'll bring more junk from off the bottom, I'm sure, but I'm trying to reel it fast enough to keep it up where we need it to be. Oh, I just saw a, a bass come right up there and side swipe it. He swiped and it just stopped right there, dead in his tracks. 
I'm chilling here, and of course, I'm keeping the eye on the minnow right now while we're waiting here. And uh, I'm hearing sweet, sweet music playing in my ears right now. You're not going to be able to hear it, but now I can hear it, and there's a couple big ones. Right out there in them pads, I'm hearing beautiful frog croaking out there. Oh, my goodness gracious. A couple more weeks, guys, and that'll be my time of the year. I love fishing with frogs, and I love fishing with buzz baits, man. Top water. It's the best, man. I cannot wait, man. I love those explosions, and... Uh, it can't come fast enough but uh you know it's been slow right here and it's driving me and the oakster crazy uh one thing i did want to mention to you guys i'm sure you've seen that the oakster has not been in here as often uh looks like we might have a hit here guys i don't know we'll see it went underneath for like a couple seconds but we'll keep an eye on that yeah it looks like we might have one here guys definitely here we go here we go guys here we go here we go fish on fish on from the seated position what do we got all right, I got to get up here. I got the bat. I got it on there, whatever it is. Ugh. Whoa, did you see that? Oh, and he came off too. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what happens when you let the line slack for a split second, guys. <laughs> that bass, I hope you guys saw that. He left at least a good foot out of the water. <laughs> But as I was saying, this always happens when you're talking and you're not concentrated on what you're supposed to be doing. But it was about a pound, so no big deal. Uh, as I mentioned to you, the Oakster, uh, he has not been prevalent on the channel. Uh, we've been saying from time to time, you know, that he has his studies that he's dealing with. Uh, right now, this weekend, guys, if you want to uh, drop a comment below and wish him all the luck, please, you know, do that, man. He is studying for his finals and, uh, again, still trying to get his degree. Uh, I think this is his final year, man, so I can't wait for him to graduate. I mean, I'm super excited for him. But uh, give them all the uh, best of luck. Give a thumbs up, guys. And uh, give a like for the uh, Oakster and what he's doing, you know, to provide for the family and make things a little bit more easier on him, income-wise, obviously. But uh, I'm always prideful of him, man. I mean, he served our country. He's bettering himself with the education. Um, obviously, he's got a great, successful marriage with his wife and beautiful daughter. Hey, JC, how you doing? <laughs> but um, we're thinking about you, Oakster, man. We cannot wait for you to come out here and start coming out here with a little bit more uh, frequency, I guess the word I want to say there. And he'll be out here tearing these fish guys up. I'm telling you, he is the master. I, on my phone, he's Oki, Lord of the Fish, because that's just basically what he is, man. He's the overlord of uh, fishing here in Delaware. But uh, we're missing you guys. Hopefully you come back uh, onto the channel here shortly. But uh, let's get back to fishing. Let's pay attention. And uh, hopefully we can get a bigger one better than that one that was right there, man. I hope my hands weren't blocking that jumping fish. We're going to go ahead and remove the homemade bait right here. And we're going to switch up to the chartreuse bait by Johnson. Uh, again, it is called the, where is it at? the minnow spin this one has I, I don't know if it's a bronze or copper blade i don't know I can, like i said i can't read the written writing it's on this thing because i don't have my glasses on me but we'll get that wrapped up there and uh see if this color will bring in the fish thing's got some decent weight on it so i might have to pick up the retrieve a little bit on this one all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reel in this minnow we're going to pop across the road here and we're going to see if uh we can get it uh a pickerel on that side. All right, running quickly across the road here before this truck comes by. The lily pads are coming up very nicely. I really had not too much success on this side at all, but you know, I never know that can change today. <laughs> but immediately, the minnow is going right towards the lily pads. Oh, fish on guys fish on there we go we got the chain pickerel guys we got the chain pickerel <laughs> all right we got our target species 
<laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Perfect. After 10 years, guys, we finally got the chain pick roll. <laughs> all right, I'm glad I picked this spot. You can see the teeth in this thing, man, are quite nasty. Look right next to the uh, left of my uh, pliers right there. But uh, so, so glad I finally was able to strike up on this fish right here. But uh, let's get that uh, back into the water again, and maybe we might get a bigger one. You never know. She's gone. Whoa. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall, guys. I feel it. <laughs> oh. There you go. Street fishing. Showing you guys how to do it here on 302 fishing. <laughs> We are going to go across the street. Uh, again, another reason why I'm hastily moving right now is because the droplets from that mist is getting quite uh, thick here. You can feel them. It feels almost like rain droplets almost, uh, larger rain droplets. And I want to make sure we can try to end this out fairly decently. Oh, we got a fish on, guys. Got another fish on. What do we have? What do we have? All right. There we go, guys. Target fish again. Another chain pickerel. <laughs> a little baby one. <laughs> All right, guys. It took a long while. Two hours. Two hours to get that chain pickerel. But uh, smack the daylights out of that uh, bait there. <laughs> But I'm happy as a lark, man. Two chain pickerel in the same day. Awesome. Let's get the hook out of this uh, bugger. All right, little fella. Go back and get big. You never know. Might do another episode in the year. You might be double your size. <laughs> but I appreciate you. She gone. I'm literally seeing a wake right out here. You can see the waves coming right at me. Something's moving over there. I literally just cast it over there too. Right here, guys, look. Big swirl right there. Let me see if I can drag my bait. Look, 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 look. Man, god darn. One right here, one right there. They're chasing that bait. All right, come on, guys, we gotta get one of these bass. Perfect, right where that bass was at. I want you to watch these last couple seconds of this clip in this episode right here. You're gonna see a fine master fisherman at work right here. You're gonna see the fish boil up right next to the bait, which was a minnow on a bobber. And then the fish eats the minnow, then pulls the bobber underneath. And then your boy right here, being the true angler he is, Hits the absolute worst hook set ever. <laughs> you thought I was hooking a sponge on top of the water, man. It was so soft and pathetic. Ugh. But that was a bass that was on the end of the line, guys. But the true success was the chain pickerel, guys. We got that after 10 years, man. I don't usually go for the snot rocket, guys. <laughs> but we're challenging ourselves and trying to show you, again, still trying to catch different species. It has been absolutely difficult to try to get fish around here in Delaware. But I was so glad we got those uh, pickerel on the end of the line, man. You don't even know, man. I was getting desperate. But I was absolutely surprised that we did not get them on the minnows. I mean, I thought we were going to get them here because that was a prime place to come because I see people you know, throwing them off to the side or I've seen them catch them on the side of the road as I'm coming down the road past this particular pond right here. But the true heroes of the day were the spinners, man. The small spinners. Well, we don't have uh, the one bait I'm getting ready to talk to you about, but everything I, I'm going to talk about is going to be in the description field right below. The first one we used was the Meps Aglia. We didn't get the chain pickerel on that, but we did get a bass to strike on it. It was actually a chartreuse uh, bait and it had uh, red in it and some white. So I said, okay, I had to think in my mind, okay, I'm gonna put that in my memory bank. 
A little bit later on, I decide to go ahead and pick up a handmade bait that I got from Smith's. That's my place, and of course, that's where we got the minnows at too, so thank you guys, I appreciate you. But the handmade bait right here, that actually got a strike here. It's got some little uh, um, red beads on here and some kind of silver tube and got a little bit of a silver blade and a hook at the end and a bass popped up on that, but it shook off. But the hero of the day was the Johnson Minnow Spin. Here you go, guys. That was the sucker that got the fish on the end of the line that we were looking for, the chain pickerel. It's got a chartreuse tail on the end of it, a little rooster tail, and of course, a little chartreuse body. I was having problems because it was heavy. And of course, uh, I don't know what uh, type of metal it is, but it's kind of like a copperish or maybe bronzish kind of color uh, that this uh, bait uh, blade is. But that was the bait that got those chain pickerel on the end of the line, man. They weren't giants, but hey, I was happy nonetheless, guys. I was able to put that challenge upon myself and succeed on it and uh, catch some fish, man, that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Like I said, they weren't monsters, but uh, I was able to put forth uh, that challenge and, and I succeeded for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I did too, guys. I mean, I put a lot of hours in here on this one. It took probably four and a half hours just to get those little bit of fish on the end of the line. It's an absolute, absolute miserable day out, but I said it's going to be 60 degrees the rest of the week. And again, right now it's it's been that way. It's, we just haven't had the sun coming out or any kind of nice overcast day. But we keep plugging through. We keep waiting for that spawn, guys. It's going to happen, man. I, I don't. I think I'm going to fall out and faint if it ever happens here in the next few days. But like, subscribe, push the notification bell, guys. Share this video out. Don't forget, guys, man, as always, there's episodes right at the end here. You can continue to watch. And, of course, browse around in the playlist, man. We've got some goodies out there. But I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get up the road. And, as always, guys, fish on.